Knowledge is the only thing that can raise a person to a heightened level of consciousness and enlightenment. Greetings and salutations. My name is Queen Ayana. I want to welcome you to the Kaumba Media Television Network. The goal of KMT is to raise the level of knowledge and awareness among our viewers. We seek to accomplish this by presenting our viewers a diverse array of video offerings on topics and subjects not available on mainstream television. Periodically, we will present various videos and programs covering many interesting topics. KMT assumes no responsibility for the express statements, views, and or opinions. Please sit back and enjoy this program. Asante Sana. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm introducing myself to the greater Pittsburgh area and, uh, and uh, the northern area of the United States, if you want to put it. My name is um, Bobby Hemet, uh, Brother Bobby Hemet. I, um, I'm a, a research scholar into ancient African history um, and the mystical side of things. Uh, uh, what they call it, African Ancient Egyptian Educational System, which would later on be called, um, in the modern sense, it would be New Age, Metaphysics, Occult, um, Esoteric Teachings. But before that, I, um, to introduce myself, I'm a brother that was uh, born in Los Angeles, California, but raised down south, deep south, a place called Mullen, South Carolina, uh, near Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, not far from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, raised in a, a basically a small town, 6,000 people, um, raised middle class, so I, I didn't have the misfortune of having so much of a traumatic background as far as being raised, but I raised basically in segregation because although I was, I was, uh, it was, I was, uh, the first part of my education was in segregation, I, it was desegregation by the third or fourth grade. But as we know in the South, um, we didn't become really desegregated until somewhere in the 80s, you know, in the Deep South. So raised in segregation, um, um, educated uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, a place called, a, a, a black college called Benedict College, um, founded in 1870. Later on, educated in the field of uh, commercial art, fine art. Um, commercial art and fine art at, at Benedict College. After Benedict College, I was uh, also educated at uh, Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. At that particular time, it was called Clark College. Um, I was so ha I was uh, able to be on hand when it uh, be there when it when it became Clark Atlanta University in 1988. Um, so I was also educated at Clark Atlanta University. Um, here again in art. In this particular time, a directed study in um, computer art, which was a new thing. Now you have all the computer graphics that you have now. Um, I got in on the ground level of computer art at that particular time, dealing with Apple computers. And from then, it was a quite primitive compared to what they're doing now. This was in the mid-80s. Um, so computer art also. And uh, 
Also, I was a shoe designer in New York. So what happened was I left Clark Atlanta University and went to the Avenues of Americas and was working for a guy by the name of Roger Bowman. And I designed shoes for about two years, two, 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 two years for him. Um, both the mostly male, uh, uh, high fashion shoes, as well as, um, as well as, uh, yes, I was talking about the shoes. The, and so I went to New York and I was started designing shoes for a guy by the name of Roger Bowman. Uh, mainly male high fashion shoes and all, and then later on for his wife Barbara Bowman, um, uh, women's shoes. And in the middle of that, somewhere in the mid to late 80s, this influx of black consciousness hit the United States, mainly on the East Coast, but it had a consortium of, of black scholars that came from all over the United States and some brothers uh, and sisters from the Caribbean and Africa. And as a result, it was a melting pot of black um, consciousness that hit the United States. Unlike the resurgence of black awareness in the early, in the late uh, 1960s, early 70s, this time we tap back into our classical African civilization centering around ancient Kim and ancient Egypt as the focal point, um, um, which, which gave this thing a, a whole new dimension into looking at African knowledge and history. And as a result, it was a small resurgence, a couple of thousand people all over the United States, but basically it was a big phenomenon in the aspect of the, the, the Africans in America and in the Caribbean uh, never really, uh, since we've been in these Western Hemisphere, never really tapped into the ancient classical history. So this was a glue. This was something that was greater than trying to learn about, you know, Swahili and a few African things we did in the, in the 1970s. So this became a big phenomenon, and I was swept up in it at the particular time. So much until, uh, uh, but upon turning, um, uh, 28, 28 in the late 80s, I, I turned 28, and by me turning 28, uh, which is also the, the same time that uh, in the mythology that Osiris died, I died in the aspect of um, all I wanted to do at this particular time was to learn this particular history. It took up most of my days and nights. Prior to going into this African history, I noticed uh, the condition of our people had a slight turn, I mean a drastic turn within the mid 80s and late 80s with the crack cocaine and the, the gang warfare and this, this up, upheaval of, of, of black deterioration and, I, and it bothered me. And I think it bothered other people around the, um, around the country. So, but it was a wake up call for a lot of people to seek for other things in another new alternative. In this particular case, it fueled us wanting to get in deeper into the African consciousness, uh, our uh, look into our history, um, compared to other alternatives that we did in the past, and so that bothered me a lot. And as a result, um, more and more uh, dealing more and more with this history, I decided to um, embark upon a program of uh, trying to dig deeper into these African sciences and these this African hidden history to try to find out how far it was going to take us. Uh, uh, at this particular time, there were great scholars like Dr. John Henry Clark, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen, Ivan Van Sertema, Francis Cress Wells, and Wade Nobles. Um, you had your Nation of Islam that had started having a research under Farrakhan and Dr. Khaled Muhammad, uh, 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 under Dr. Khaled Muhammad. And you had a, uh, you had a resurgence of that. You also, uh, um, had other scholars like Dr. Charles Finch, and it was a whole cadre of scholars that came in that influenced me at that particular time of being a student in this particular information. So, but I, I took it upon myself that I always had this type of um, way about me. When I got into something, I went into it wholeheartedly. I had a one-track mind when it came to it. I mean, I sifted down to the core of it, so I would never do anything you know, half loaded. So as a result, I became a researcher while I was a student. And that is exactly what, the, what most of the actual um, Afrocentric scholars at that time said that we needed to do. We were all needed to be students. 
So as a result, I became a researcher into this particular information. Um, my artist background and my artist training was it made it so that I was able to permeate beyond the surface and not just look at the apparent aspect of things. And that's that research mode of being an artist um, um, to turn things over and dissect them. So as a result, I kept delving into this particular information. Mainly, one thread that I heard that came out of this the Afrocentric movement of the Black Conscious Movement of the late 80s and the early 90s was that the ancient Africans or the ancient Egyptians had a mystery system, a mystery system. They call it an African educational system at the Temple of Karnak, the Temple of Luxor, the Temple of Dendera, the Temple of Edfu, the Temple of Isis at Pile, which was the last temple to be closed. These, uh, these temples, and they had 80,000 students that would go to Karnak uh, Temple at one time. So we asked these questions, well, what was the mysteries? What were they learning? At that particular time, we had one blueprint book that most of the scholars was going by, which was basically an introduction into the mysteries, which was Stolen Legacy by George G.M. James. Um, unfortunately, some scholars took that to think that, that the seven liberal arts of what we would have in Western education would be the mystery system. But it was far vast than that. And so as a result, I set out and embarked upon uh, a journey to try to uncover the mysteries. Those particular mysteries led me to what is called the New Age movement or the metaphysical movement, which throughout America is these particular bookstores that have all of this esoteric information and this particular knowledge. Now this is, the, and so this is the, uh, the key to break open this door and sling this door of ancient African learning back into the modern age with this one particular key and this one particular history that I did get in the Afrocentric movement and that was the history of the Moors. Now we know that the Moors, the Moors came up into Europe and ruled Europe for 700 years creating 16 universities, the University of Salamanca being one of the key universities um, uh, but several 16 universities throughout Europe. So, in this particular aspect, this gives us a link of what was taught to the Europeans other than just the seven liberal arts or the basic foundation of what we call is that the information that was given to the European, we're talking 700 years now, was given to them was not only the basic foundations of what we call Western education as what you would know it, but also all these esoteric information that also came along with this thing, which, which would be um, different forms of mysticism, which I'll get into in a few minutes of what I'm talking about. All of this particular information also was given to the Europeans over the, seven, two, uh, over the 700 years. As a result, these Europeans preserved this information after the ousting of the Moors in 1492. They preserved this particular information and as a consortium they agreed to take this particular information, the mystical side, the es esoteric side, the hidden side of things, and they decided to take that and separate it from the seven, seven, seven liberal arts of the basic foundation of education which is mathematics, uh, uh, you know, science, mathematics, physical science, you see that type of um, um, education. They would separate these particular arts, which means that the esoteric stuff that I'm talking about here, the metaphysical, is actually science. Well, I'll go into it in a few minutes if I'm getting ahead of you. But they would separate two forms of knowledge, they would separate it, and the other form of knowledge would be only relegated to their lodges. The York Rite, the Scottish Rite, Rosicrucian Orders, Knights Templars, um, the Grotto Rites, um, and different uh, esoteric orders that was left behind, which in fact was inducted and manifested by the Moors. The Moors were the ones that were the creators of these lodges. And to give you an example, you know when you go to uh, college now, you will have your fraternities. Well, the fraternities that would be at those universities of those seven, those 16 universities that was created by the Moors throughout Europe, the fraternities were the York Rite, the Scottish Rite, the Grotto Rites. 
So what we would call the lodges now were the actual fraternities of the fraternal orders of those particular universities. So as a result of, of, of the Europeans becoming the custodians and preserving this knowledge, they relegated the esoteric sciences or the hidden sciences of the world only to the lodges. And as a result, those particular sciences became something as mystical, something as uh, 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 hosh posh, or something as mumbo jumbo to the uh, other society, and something that was feared. Because as a result, they even incorporated into their fundamental organized religions for you not to look into these particular art forms. So they, so so far, uh, uh, they became black magic which is a code word for the magic of the black man. Uh, you can get that in Lieutenant A.E. Powell's book, The Astro Body, which is another com compilation of this particular text coming out of those particular systems. Now, as a result, these esoteric teachings that was relegated to the lodge, later on the lodge, uh, the, these, it became a great library that the lodge produced of these esoteric sciences. And those esoteric sciences later on became popular among small groups of Europeans in the, in, the, in, the, in the continental United States. And somewhere in the 60s, metaphysical bookstores or cult bookstores started popping up. Now, this is the great mystery. We was looking for the ancient African mystery system. What we found out was that these esoteric teachings were later, later on named the New Age. And so what was ancient Africa and ancient Camite and mystical sciences of Black Samaria, Mesopotamia, ancient Black India, ancient Africa became the New Age. Well, a lot of this stuff was filtered in. So when we filtered into the New Age uh, movement, and so when we look back at it, we started thinking it was white science. And so as a result of we coming back together in the late 80s, early 90s and discussing the ancient history that led to the mystery system and going looking for the mystery system, I uncovered the mystery system, the long lost mystery system was preserved and was called the New Age, which was, was called the New Age. And so as a result, um, this was another opening or a gateway to be an addition to us uncovering not only our history, in the Afrocentric movement, but later on leading into the higher sciences and the higher mysteries, which is basically your metaphysical aspect of, 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 of science. Um, if you need, I can give you some type of indication of what these things are. These things deal a lot with um, certain disciplines as alchemy, which is also the study of precious metals. Later on, the study, alchemy is also an ancient study of what is called melanin which is the basis of the central nervous system of most indigenous people or uh, 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 the uh, original black people of the earth. Uh, certain things as uh, the tarot, your tarot card, which, is, which most people think is an ancient oracle, but uh, it's more than just a fortune telling thing. This is a picture window of archetypes and dip, uh, of, of symbology of ancient knowledge encoded into the tarot cards. Your playing cards come from that particular tarot system. All of this stuff is brought up by the Moors. You got your astronomy, astrology, um, astrology, the knowledge of a, a spiritual system in our body called the chakra system. The chakra system is wheels of light that is inside of the body that goes from the root chakra culminating into the pineal gland and the crown chakra, but operated by a divine force in us called the kundalini energy, which in meditation, uh, in meditation in several arts such as dance and such as dream and stuff can raise this spiritual energy into the third eye to become enlightened. So in so many words, the esoteric knowledge is the knowledge of illumination. Man coming from a sleep level of consciousness to an awakened level of illumination and enlightenment, uh, um, and, and enlightenment. So, uh, the esoteric sciences basically ultimately culminate culminate into man's own spiritual awakening, and that is the esoteric and the keys to the ancient mystery system, where it tells you in John chapter ten, verse thirty-four, thirty-six: 
Is it not written in your law that I say ye are gods and the scriptures cannot be broken? So in so many words, what do they mean by that? That means they're talking about God waking. You becoming one with the Godhead. And so these esoteric sciences and stuff that became spookism to people who did not know that these were ancient, uh, ancient uh, uh, scientific methods. It's now brought back into an uh, explanation of a complete science, uh, a complete science that goes along with what we call physical science or uh, uh, science of Western education. And so as a result, these are the things that uh, where I came in. So I started lecturing in 1992, in June of 1992, and I've been on the scene since um, for 11 years now. And as a result, I, my... Uh, my key was to uncover these hidden mysteries, which also leads to ancient mythology. Um, ancient mythology, uh, the study of the dead, which is hidden in something called necromancy. Um, um, the study of dreams, the study of psychic phenomena. Um, um, the physiological aspect of the body is in, in relationship to um, the several cells in the body, um, certain things called the aura of the body, and not only that, going along with hidden history, history of the earth being one land mass and one time and one people, which is now proven in regular science when they deal with uh, what they call Pangeo, what they call tectonic plates. So if you, uh, uh, in one aspect it is, it is explained as the history of Atlantis, in ancient mythology, but if you don't want to deal with that, it has been proven since 19, since the 19, early 1900s, that the Earth was one landmass, and based on tectonic plates and 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 the shifting of tectonic plates, you would have continental drift. So that has been proven where you can take the actual planet, the the, the actual uh, landmass of the continents, and put them back together like a puzzle. Um, so that's been proven. It was proven in the early 1900s, but the guy who proved it was uh, weather meteorologists and because the geologists didn't find this particular information they suppressed his information until all of them died out and a younger generation in the 1970s came and had and came and opened this up to the west and said it was proven that we were one landmass and one people so not only did we have to uncover the esoteric sciences of these missions but we had to cover hidden history hidden history of uh, uh, that uh, 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 Professor um, Ivan Van Serta uh, embarked upon and uh, Renoka Rashidi that we were talking about a planet where black people covered the entire globe and going in and finding out that these ancient esoteric scientists take for instance um, your river dance that the, that, that the uh, Irish do is copied off of an ancient African dance where the, 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 the top torso remains uh, 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 stiff and the, uh, only the legs moved. These are different things um, that, uh, that, that, that came up that now the European deals with. Um, um, also an esoteric thing, the mysteries of sex. You have whole what is called the tantric mysteries. First introduced into England with the Karma Sutra when England invaded India and found these ancient texts of the mysteries of sex. You see what I'm saying? And, and there's now, since then, it's, it's, it's tons of things on the tantric system of an of a ancient divine art form of sex in a scientific thing for healing and for higher spiritual awareness. So not only do we have to have a consortium of, 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 of the esoteric history, but we had to uncover ancient history. Um, ancient history, like take for instance in Richard Noon's book, Ice the Ultimate Disaster, this particular book where they, they he talks about because he's a, a a big time mason um out of atlanta georgia where he talks about the europeans finding egyptians in maine that spoke and wrote hieroglyphics somewhere in the 1700s and he talks about how they found tablets of akhenaten's hymn of him to akhenaten in Oklahoma, almost 20 years or 30 years before they even knew Akhenaten existed when they excavated his ruins in Kemet in the late 1800s. They found 
um, they found uh, hieroglyphic slabs uh, with the hymn of Akhenaten, uh, the hymn of Aten, in Oklahoma. It, it uh, uh, uncovering history where I went to Memphis, Tennessee, and in Memphis, Tennessee, the uh, when I went to Memphis, Tennessee, the uh, a curator of a black underground railroad explained that uh, the native the native indigenous Indians uh, uh, I don't like to call them Indians but the native indigenous people which you know of as Native Americans there talked about when the settlers came in the first 13 colonies and when the settlers came to Memphis Tennessee they didn't name the, it didn't wasn't named Memphis by the 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 uh, the Masons of the European set. The Native Americans told them that this was named Memphis by a group of Egyptians that traveled to that land, or traveled to that land and was living on that land and was ruling that land when they migrated in. And as a, as a result, they as a result, they as a result, they preserved the name um, Memphis long after these Egyptians left. And so the Europeans in that area, when they came, they said, okay, we will agree, being Mason, we will agree to, to keep this Memphis, which is named after Memphis, Egypt. And we find this type of information, uh, this type of information. So we're talking about not only, uh, we're talking about the hidden side of things, which is also hidden history, like Professor John Henry Clark say, a colonization of history. You see, a, col a colonization of history. How they have pictures of Anubis in the South Sea Islands on, 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 on mountains. And why is it that recently, some part in the latter 20th century, they shut down most parts of the Grand Canyon where they found temples of Isis, or temples of Aset, and temples of Osiris in the Grand Canyon. Uh, brother doing a lot of scholarly work on that, um, which is uh, the brother uh, Hakeem Bay out of New York is doing a lot of uh, scholarly work on, on that particular information. So we had to uncover this type of information and this type of esoteric information, um, which in so many words, when you go into a new age bookstore, the reason why you was turned off because you was thinking this was some stuff that white people created. Meanwhile, they were crafty enough not to let you know that they preserved your stuff and basically whitewashed it in the aspect of when, the, when these texts mysteriously appear just mysteriously appeared in Europe. Whenever you hear these texts mysteriously appearing in Europe, like the ancient Kabbalah, which is the Kabbalistic system, to try to understand this so people can get an understanding of what I'm talking about here, you got four major uh, 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 religions. You got Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Buddhism, which is your major religions. You have several other indigenous religions, but those major religions, what they don't tell you here is each religion has an exoteric aspect and an esoteric aspect. The exoteric is what the masses learn, which is what you have today, which is basically inspirational ceremony of moralism and moral code that you call religion, how to behave. But the priests learn something different that was called esoteric. So your esoteric, each one of these religions have an esoteric counterpart. So, your, so let's take Christianity. In Christianity, the esoteric part of that would be something of a system called Gnosticism. So you need to learn what Gnosticism is to try to understand the esoteric, deeper meaning of Christianity. In, in, in Hebrew, uh, uh, Judaism, the esoteric part, the exoteric would be Judaism, Torah. The esoteric would be Kabbalah, which is the Kabbalistic system. In Islam, you would have the basic Islam aspect of Quran, but the esoteric would be Sufism. So, Gnosticism for Christianity, opposed to the Bible, uh, extension of the Bible, uh, Kabbalistic for, 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 for Hebrew, extension of the Torah, and the Sufi teachings, extension of the Quran. And in Buddhism, you would have ancient, the yogi systems, ancient... Um, um, it's called Shivaism, a Kashmir Shaivaism, a Shivaism, and different systems like that, or Tibetan Buddhism. Um, so you'd have these particular uh, uh, tantric aspects in 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 um, the ancient uh, in the ancient Indian aspect. But what I'm saying here is this particular information 
It's not supposed to be an, an attack on your religion. It is supposed to be an extension of your religion and an enhancement of your religion. You see what I'm saying? And that's and so, but if a groups of secret societies keep this stuff exclusive outside of your what you get every day as your moral teachings, then you would think that this is some strange things also. And just remember, one man's God is another man's devil. What you think is strange is what you just don't have knowledge of. What you just don't have knowledge of. You see what I'm saying? And so that is what we're dealing with. And when you, break it, when you basically break it down, all of these religions are nothing but components of one universal truth. And you must understand what that universal truth is. The other thing here is what you call evil and satanic and deep and deadly and stuff is just what you don't know about. Take for instance, we'll give you an example. The esoteric piece on my neck, you see right here, is a goat. This goat that has a star in his head, well, number one, esoterically, it represents Saturn. And Saturn is ruled by Capricorn. Capricorn um, Saturn rules Capricorn. So, therefore, we talk about an, 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 an astrological symbol. But before that was, it was a symbol of Amun-Ra, ancient uh, um, Amun-Ra. It was also the symbol of Osiris. Later on, the symbol of Pan in, in Greece. So basically, there is no symbol, there is no history in the Bible, anything where they give you an actual physical representation of what the devil is. But later on, this particular symbol was used to make a symbol of the devil, of Satan. So when people see this based on ignorance, they're thinking it's some kind of satanic symbol as a symbol of Satan. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, in the Bible or whatever. So th that's because of ignorance. Um, 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 but you also have the, the wings and the Ankh, you know, the Ankh is the, is the, is the Egyptian Trinity cross and, and the, and the womb with the loop, but also the wings also represent enlightenment. You will see that on the staff and the caduceus of your medical association, which also represents the Kundalini energy of the staff of Tahuti, of Thoth, or Tahuti in Egypt. You also have here, which is an ancient symbol, you have two symbols. Whenever you see the baby Jesus, which is a baby, which represents the knowledge as an infant state, which is sleeping, this bug, which is sleeping in an infant state, but when it becomes uh, illuminated, it, 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 it gains the wings, and it becomes Kephra. Um, each, every last one is a Christ image. The star in the goat's head that you see right here represents the third eye opening. Uh, the first eye opening or the third eye. And, and uh, so, these, so these are ancient motifs that was later on woven into even Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. But because you don't know the information, it's all been relegated as evil. And basically when later, so when, when later cultures come in and do, did, did not understand the greater mysteries of what was going on in the society, they basically relegated, relegated the... So here we're just talking about ancient ignorance. And later on, sifted into modern ignorance. Um, you see what I'm saying? So the, these are things. So this is the uh, uh, the type of things that I've been involved in. Um, I, I, I've been involved in. Um, there's, there's tons of this particular information. Like take for instance, your Kabbalah, which is the esoteric teachings of the Hebrew, found in Spain. So who put it there? The Moors. You see what I'm saying? The Moors put it there. And in so many words, these, these particular ancient texts was preserved and there's whole society, secret societies that is going on through the Europeans. And all of those particular secret societies that they are dealing with and all is nothing but preserving our ancient esoteric knowledge and information. And basically that's what I've been involved in in the last, um, the last 11 years of teaching and the last 15 years of studying. Um, of, of, of studying, and they tell you in Egypt, uh, Kemet, every day you live, you're supposed to learn something. And the day that you did not learn something is a day that you did not live. Also, we, we have to say that a part of a, a part of the ongoing quest to try to free the minds of, 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 of black people is also to deal with the psychology of the people, which is, uh, which is one of the first and foremost. But even in the ancient scriptures, the ancient Egyptian mythology that would later on go travel up into Europe brought by the Moors called your Grail mythology. So King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and your Grail is nothing but ancient Egyptian or ancient Camite knowledge woven into a 
European mythology for the Europeans by the Moors, brought up through um, Ireland and later on into to Britain. Um, Camelot, which means the black lot. Cam, lot. It means the black state. Camelot is another word for Egypt. Uh, another, 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 another word for Egypt. Um, the, the, the cup there, the, the, the grail stone, it was, the grail cup was laid on the grail stone, which is talking about the holy grail is the pineal gland, which uh, is ultimately the pineal gland. So these ancient mysteries that we have brought up by the Moors and preserved, and then later on, after the Moors, but they preserved this stuff and, and created secret societies, they really went into a, a resurgence of this information, what they call a new renaissance period after they translated hieroglyphics in the 1830s, and then they had a new resurgence of all types of information, and, and by that time, the British had, 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 had conquered the whole globe, so works coming from India, works coming from China, works coming from all over, works coming from Egypt, and all of this thing became a custodium of information, and consortium of information later on known as the New Age, the esoteric aspect and this is the ancient Egyptian mystery system and my job the last 11 years uh, uh, basically in teaching is to uncover the research of this particular information this t this particular information <laughs> any questions in so many words what we're telling people now is to get back into the study and anything that they think is ancient and mystical or anything that you don't understand force yourself to deal with it and study it and to bring about a new awareness for yourself, if not your people, at least for yourself. But basically, we all benefit from this. So we're challenging people to go, go out and go frequent these esoteric sections in the bookstores, or what they call the New Age section, and, and all, all the philosophy sections, and to try to understand that this is all African knowledge, and it is a, it's, it's quintessential um, and essential that you deal with this type of stuff, because it is your knowledge. So this is food for the people that's out there searching. And that's the best thing that I can say do. But also, whenever you are doing this and recovering your ancient information, always have a good African or Afrocentric background to fuse this stuff back in. Because if you don't, you're going to think it's some crazy way out stuff. But just remember, it's all a part of our knowledge and learning and keep an open mind. We at KMT feel it was an honor to have presented the program you just witnessed. Hopefully you found it interesting, informative, and enlightening. Let us hear from you. Please direct your questions, comments, observations, and or concerns to Kaumba Media Television Network, care of B.E. Barnes, 6393 Penn Avenue, Box 180, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15206. Please be sure to identify the specific program. Asante Sana.